Hello, today we're going to look at the idea of variation and by variation we mean the differences in characteristics between individuals of a species. So it's the difference in characteristics that you will find in all the individuals of one particular species. We might call that a population of individuals. Okay, now these differences are caused by one of uh, two reasons. One of them could be the fact that the genes are different or the alleles of the genes are different. So we could say it's caused by genes or variations in the genes, but it can also be in, uh, it could also be affected by the environment as well. So the differences in characteristics can also be infected, affected, not infected, affected by the environment. Of course, some characteristics will be affected by both, both the genes and the environment. So let's have a look at a couple of examples of what we mean. So on the left hand side there, we've got genetic causes of differences or genetic causes of variation. And on the right hand side, we've got environmental causes of variation. So there are some examples there in blue. So if we took for humans, th these are all char characteristics for humans, but if we had eye color, that would be purely genetic. Blood type would be genetic. We have hair length, which would be environmental only. Accent would be environmental. And then weight and skin color, these are affected by both the environment and by genes as well. So you can imagine uh, skin color can darken if there is a high exposure to sunlight. Weight can be vary can vary depending on the diet as well. So here we've got some examples of different species of living things, and what we can say is that usually the variation is very extens extensive in a species. By extensive, we mean there is a there is lots and lots of variation. Even in individuals of a species that look very similar, there is quite a lot of variation. So variation is usually ex extensive within a population of a species, species. So let's have a look at a couple of examples in our plant here. If we were to pick out a couple of ways these plants vary, and they're all plants of the same species, we've got the height of the plant, we've got the thickness of the stem, uh, we've got number of leaves, which varies from plant to plant. We've even got variation in the color. Now remember that variation could be caused by genes or the environment or a combination of both as well, but we still have that variation. If we look at these birds down the bottom there, they're budgerigars, we've got differences in color, you've got differences in patterns of color as well. Uh, there's an example of a difference in the length of the tail. You could also have beak shape or beak size, and these are the kinds of variations that we can see. In our ducks over here, we've got a slight variation in the beak color, but also in the markings or the pattern on the beak. You probably can't see it very well there, but certainly when I was in the park the other day, I saw that quite clearly. We've got slight variations in feather coloration and pattern. Uh, the tail length for those two is slightly different. And again, these are just variations that we could see at a glance, but if we were to look very carefully, you'd find a lot more differences. All these variations, all these differences that we can see are called the phenotypes. We've looked at that in a previous video, but we can refer to those as phenotypes. The phenotype of individuals would be the variation in characteristics. So we can have a slightly more detailed look at this. If we've got individuals with variation in a species, we can actually call these variants. Variants. Now these, these different characteristics, the variation is caused by mutation. And what do we mean by mutation? Well, that's changes in the DNA. Mutation happens all the time. It's spontaneous, so that means it could happen at any time. And it's a change in the DNA. Now, usually we associate mutation with a massive change in the phenotype or massive change in how an organism looks, but very often they're just very, very tiny changes. And most of the time, in fact, there are no effects at all. So the mutation will cause no effect at all on the organism. Sometimes it has an influence on the phenotype. So in other words, it influences the phenotype, but possibly not very much change. And sometimes, very few times in fact, it results in the change, in a change in the phenotype. So a change in the physical characteristics of the individuals. And that can be caused by a mutation. That change can sometimes be negative. In other words, it could cause a disadvantage for the organism. And sometimes it could be a positive change. And by positive, we mean a change that 
uh, allows the individual to be better suited to its environment. So this could be a slight change in coloration or any other kind of change that appears in the phenotype. The individual is better suited to its environment and over time that change could be spread because it's passed on to offspring and that could lead to a change in the species. And changes that happen via mutation, we describe them as quite rapid changes in the species. And this is because the mutation can be spread just over, over just a few generations and not millions of years, which is sometimes how long it takes for some changes in species uh, to happen. Okay, so this is the idea behind variation in living things. Remember, it's for both plants and animals. In fact, all kinds of living things, bacteria, anything that you might think of. And these are the mechanisms by which changes or variation in species can happen.